As promised, I'm continuing on with my plugins topic today, and I'm going over my top five plugins for product design. Let's get started. First off, Auto Arrow. When you're doing app design, creating a file that can be easily followed by a developer is the top priority. Sometimes when coming from doing a lot of web design, there's a natural tendency to try and communicate the flows of the screens within a presentable prototype, which might be useful for getting sign off from management or maybe user testing, but it's a terrible experience for developers. They simply don't have the time to be clicking through all those screens. And it's quite a cognitive load too, trying to build out a mental model of what connects where within this clickable prototype. And arrows are simply a much better way for developers to navigate these complex flows. There's a few arrow plugins out there in the Figma community, and my colleagues and I still have our fingers crossed for Figma to implement arrows natively, like they've done in FigJam but I've been using a plugin called Auto Arrow. It's pretty nice. You boot up the plugin, then click from one layer to the other and make a link. And as a tip, I sometimes like to lock that layer so you don't have to wrestle with accidentally selecting it as you continue to work on your screens. And keep in mind, all the arrows are put into a group. So make sure you keep that group at the top of your layers panel as you continue to work. But probably the coolest thing about it is that it remembers which layers are linked. So if you move things around and boot up the plugin again, it'll update all those arrow positions. Pretty nice. Just don't leave the plugin open as you work. It does have a memory leak issue when it comes to bigger files. Basically, it'll keep updating all those arrows on the page until you run out of RAM. My second most used plugin is Contrast. It's a really simple utility. You simply select the layer, run the plugin, and it'll compare the contrast between the layer you've selected and the background it's on top of. It really comes in handy when you're setting up a color system or doing spot checks on layers. And it gives you the best breakdown I've seen of which content accessibility standard it does or doesn't comply with. Styler is a great plugin too, that generates text and color styles from layers. This is a workflow you'd be pretty familiar with if you're coming from Sketch. Simply make sure your text layers are named and arranged in the layer panel appropriately. Run it and you've got all your local styles. It's also handy when you're moving styles into a new document. You can extract styles from the old file, move those layers into a new file and run generate. Pretty nifty. My fourth most used plugin for app design has been Instance Finder. Sometimes you create a component and you're not sure how many times that component has been used, or maybe you're trying to deprecate a component and you wanna make sure it's been swapped out in the design file. That's how I've been using Instance Finder. Unfortunately for bigger files, it can be an expensive plugin to run. And by that I mean, it can take a really long time to read and filter the page, but it's the best tool I've found so far. Finally, my fifth plugin is a measuring tool. It comes in handy when you're preparing documentation for components and want a quick way to communicate the measurements of the component without having to inspect it. I've been using Redlines just out of habit. It was the first Figma plugin to do this kind of thing and it's still the most popular, but it's definitely worth mentioning Figma Measure 2. It's been gaining popularity of late and it has a couple more features that you might be interested in. And as a bonus, I've been really impressed with the Lottie Files plugin. After signing into your Lottie Files account, you can drag and drop in a Lottie JSON file and it'll render out a GIF and place that GIF inside your Figma file. And that GIF will play in any Figma prototype. Really saves you from all that hassle of exporting an After Effects file to Media Encoder, rendering it out as an MP4, then converting it to a GIF in Photoshop. And if you're interested in creating a Lottie animation, be sure to check out one of my previous videos. I'll put the link for that in the description below. There's a couple of other app plugins I've been exploring recently, like Tokens, created by the very talented Jan6, but I think that one might deserve its own video. I'll put the link for that in the description below as well if you're interested in checking that out. But that completes my roundup of my most used plugins for app design in Figma. Please let me know what other Figma plugins you find handy for app design in the comments below. Until next time, Happy designing.